What's up, everybody? We're out here at Fort Pulaski, just outside of Savannah, on your way to uh, Tybee Island. And uh, we're going to take a quick visit of the, uh, of the fort. But before I did, I wanted to give a shout out to uh, Greg and Sonia. They called me uh, while I was on the bike on the way out here. And I thought it was a regular phone call and that they couldn't see me. And I didn't realize uh, by looking at my phone that uh, it was actually a uh, Facebook call. So the camera on my phone was active and uh, I was sitting there talking to them and they were like, what are you doing? You know, and I said, well, I'm out riding the bike and it's a beautiful freaking day out in the sun and it doesn't get any better than having a sunny day and two wheels under you. And Sonia says, yeah, well, it's good to see you. And I was like, you can't see me. And then I looked down at the phone and realized it was a uh, Facebook call. Oh, yeah, you couldn't. And there I was standing on the side of the road looking like a crackhead, swinging my arms around like this and talking to nobody. Um, but anyway, Greg and Sonia, thanks for the call. I enjoyed it. And Greg, get on down here and we'll, we'll go to uh, Hunting Island or somewhere. Over a 30-hour period, 5,275 shots and rounds uh, fell on Fort Pulaski. If you'll notice, back where the 7 looks like it's carved out in the wall, all the way to the end you'll see a little hole. It still has one of the cannon shot fired from Tybee in the wall. The Union Army had built the fort, so they knew the strengths and weaknesses. Directly in line with these walls on the other side is the powder uh, storage area, the powder keg. And the colonel that was over Fort Pulaski at the time uh, knew with as much damage as Fort Pulaski was taking, it wasn't going to last long, especially if they hit the powder keg, because if that had happened, the whole fort would have been annihilated. He didn't want to see that happen to him, his troops, or his fort. So he surrendered after 30 hours of bombardment. The walls are like 
I'm wanting to say they're seven feet thick. They may be ten. Um, and over six weeks after the Confederates surrendered the fort, the Union soldiers had rebuilt the damage. So it was back in service uh, within six weeks of uh, being taken by the Union forces. One of the first things you have to do when you're building on a island that's right in the middle of uh, a river, where the river has the mouth that leads into the ocean, is you have to do away with the tidal waters. And in 1829, when Fort Pulaski was being designed and built, uh, a young lieutenant uh, who was a engineer uh, had to design a way of getting that water away from the fort. That lieutenant's name was Robert E. Lee, and uh, he did an outstanding job. The, the, the plan and the system still works today. Uh, it's uh, a group of ditches and dikes that keep the water flow, uh, flow away from the fort and also helps with uh, sanitation as well at the same time. So there you go, 1829 here at Fort Pulaski building the fort and engineering the, the water system to keep the tidal uh, flows away from the fort all the way to uh, Fort Chadburn out in Texas um, where he was a lieutenant colonel in the Union Army before he left to go to the Confederates. Robert E. Lee had a long and uh, successful uh, career as a military mind. Uh, you got to give him that.
currently on the uh, southern side of the fort, still on the exterior. And all the way around the landlocked side, which is the southern side, uh, southern and, e and western side, you will find these gun placements. They didn't need them on the eastern and northern side because that was water. They had those guns on top of the fort. They had these guns down here so that they could defend from the uh, landlocked side. was put on a pivot 
and it can rotate around on these uh, steel bands. Some of them, it just looks like that's where the gun went. Um, so uh, it's kind of hard to tell, but I will let you know. 